And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Homecoming. car speeds up a dark country road, barely ahead of the gathering storm. At the crest of the hill, the driver swings wildly in to stop before a rambling farmhouse. Quickly he's out, stumbling up the steps and across the creaking porch. Once inside, John Aaron scurries breathlessly to each door and window, slamming and locking them. But it's not the storm that holds terror for you, is it, John? No. You're sure that a far greater danger lies in the few brief hours ahead. It wasn't always like this, was it, John? The once proud farm and its family that fell gradually into decay, till only you and your younger stepbrother, Robert, remained. Robert was the stronger, wild and unruly. But not you, John. No, you've always been known as a stern, righteous man. But now only one thing is important, isn't it? You're certain that Robert is coming home. Now, as you sit back to wait, your mind goes back to the day when it all began. You'd watched as the sheriff and his deputies came. John! John, are you home? He's not the one we want, Sheriff. Well, good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, John. What's the meaning of this? Uh, well, I uh, I guess you wouldn't exactly call this a social visit. Well, I gathered as much. What do you want? No need for talk. Come on, we'll start with the house. Okay, okay. Nobody sets foot in my house without the right. Now, wait, wait, wait. Now, hold on, boys, hold on. Now, there's no need of that. Then let him tell us where Robert is. I don't account for my stepbrother. He's not here. John, I uh, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I've known you and Robert since you were knee-high to grasshoppers. Just what are you trying to say, Sheriff? Well, uh, folks are getting mighty upset about Jed Peters. He hasn't been seen since he came here to your place three days ago. He had plenty of money with him, too. Jed was going to buy this farm. He never did trust banks. I wasn't planning to sell. It was Robert's idea. Well, uh... Jed's horse showed up at home without him. That's all we know. Well, I know nothing of Jed Peters. Now, why did you come here, Sheriff? Well, I just thought you might help, John. You don't mind if we sort of look around? For Jed Peters? On my farm? No, 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 no. There's no offense to you. It's a job to be done. Uh, of course, we've got a warrant. Oh, I see. You didn't need one. <laughs> I'm not one to stand in the way of the law. Oh, no, of course you are, John. After all, you're the last one we'd suspect of anything. So you'd followed the sheriff and the others, hadn't you, John? Seemingly bewildered as they searched the house, the loft, the outbuilding. You'd kept your silence. Until finally, down the hill, buried in a shallow grave in a grove of willows, they had found the shattered body of Jed Peters. You appeared quite shocked, didn't you, John? Hardly knew what to say. Don't surprise us none, Sheriff. We knew what we'd find. All right, all right, boys. 
Now leave John Aaron and me alone. Suit yourself, but if you don't get it out of him, we will. You're right. Sheriff, you, they don't think I had anything to do with it. You know better than that, John. Nobody's accusing you. Well, I just can't understand it. Now, uh, I know how you feel. But if there's anything you can tell me now, uh, about Robert. Oh, hold on, Sheriff. Not Robert. Where is he, John? Well, I don't know. He just disappeared three days ago. He left without saying a word. Hmm. Same day Jed and his money disappeared? Oh, sure. Sheriff. Robert wouldn't steal or kill. Well, plenty of folks saw Robert and Jed quarrel in the village. Robert made plenty of threats. Robert never could hold his tongue. But you can't be sure. No. No. But it looks like Robert's in trouble. A heap of trouble. <laughs> Yes, John, you carried it off very well, didn't you? For only you know the real truth, that you killed Jed Peters. Killed him in desperation for his money. Still hidden safely inside the house, where you haven't dared touch it since. It was so fortunate, Robert's going away when he did. It seemed an admission of his guilt. And after they found him in the city, you had plenty of time to lay your plans. You made a point to be at the sheriff's office when he brought Robert back. All right, in here, Robert. John. Hello, Robert. Is that all you've got to say? Supposing we set this thing straight. What can I say now? Just tell them their mistake. That's all you have to do. Robert denies everything, John. Kind of suspect that he would. Well, why shouldn't I deny it? I don't know what anybody's talking about. Then tell us, Robert, why you went away so quickly without letting anybody know. John can tell you. He knew I was going. I went off to get a decent job. Right at the time Jed was killed, after you threatened him. I threatened Jed? Sure I did. The old Mitra had John and me where he wanted us. He knew we needed the money. Yes, but we didn't need it that bad, Robert. Oh, stop it, John. You knew I was going. You were licked even if you wouldn't admit it. I was sick and tired of living with nothing but failure and decay. I couldn't face it anymore, that's all. Well, all right, you told me that before. Because it's true. Why don't you tell him, John? Why don't you tell him the truth? I can't defend murder, Robert. Even though we grew up. Together. Why, you? Tell him a trick of what I beat it out of you. Robert, stop. Oh. Tell him now. Get back there, Robert. Get back there. Uh, you won't get a chance to do that again. Uh, John. You all right, John? Well, well, what happens to me doesn't matter. Don't hold this against Robert, Sheriff. He already has enough to answer for. <laughs> You were so forgiving, weren't you, John? Through the days that followed, you'd walk with head bowed, bearing alone the humiliation. And all through the trial, you felt the sympathetic eyes of everyone on you. Robert sat tight-lipped, not once taking his cold eyes off you as the evidence piled up against him. Then, when you were called to the stand... <laughs> Mr. Aaron, I know this is difficult for you, but try and remember when you first realized that Robert was gone. Well, I, I've sworn to tell the truth. There's nothing else I can do now. You mean there's something more? Yes, much more. I'm ready now to tell everything. Please, 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 please go on. Well, I'd been away all that day. When I drove in the gate that evening, I... I heard a shot. From where? From back of the house. I ran around the house fast as I could and saw Robert standing there with a shotgun in his hand. Jed Peters was on the ground. Mr. Aaron, Mr. Aaron, in spite of the fact that you know you'll be held to account for protecting a murderer, you still swear that this is true? I do. I felt I had to protect him and the family name. What did you do then? I helped him bury Jed. And then I begged Robert to go away as far as he could. Did he tell you about the money? I don't know about any money. I'd tell if I did. I, I've lied enough. I feel I was partly to blame. If only I'd been kinder to Robert in our trouble. A little more understanding. Robert Aaron, did you or did you not shoot and kill Jed Peters? I did not. 
But you've heard what my righteous stepbrother said. You believe him. But there's nothing more for me to say. I'm asking you now. You realize this is your last chance? I've got nothing more to say. And so the trial was quickly over. And after that, the inevitable verdict, Robert was found guilty. Sentenced to from 10 years to life. All as you planned it, John. And as the sheriff led Robert from the courtroom. Come along, Robert. Without telling my grieving stepbrother goodbye, Sheriff? Well, all right if he wants it. Only for a minute, though. Well, John. Goodbye, Robert. Too bad it had to be this way. Don't worry yourself too much. I'll come back someday, John. And when I do, you can count on one thing. There'll be another trial for murder. When you see a lot of people all staring in the same direction, it's only human nature, isn't it, to want to stop and find out what's attracting them? Well, by the same token, I should think that most everyone with a car would want to find out what it is that has attracted so many motorists to signal gasoline. In the beginning, you know, signal gas was sold by only a small group of stations in Southern California. Today, however, you'll find signal dealers in seven Pacific Coast states, from Canada to Mexico. Such growth must mean that more and more motorists are finding they prefer signal gasoline. And what is it they prefer about signal? Well, for one thing, mileage that has made signal famous as the go-farther gasoline. And for another thing, performance, the pleasure-packed kind that goes hand-in-hand hand with good mileage. But for the complete story, you've got to let a few tankfuls of signal speak for itself. I promise you, the performance of your own car will tell you much better than any words of mine why more and more drivers are switching to Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. It's hard to realize that it all happened only three years ago, isn't it, John? Robert convicted of murder. Your own testimony had sealed the verdict. And only Robert himself suspicioned that it was actually you who had killed Jed Peters. And after three years, you're still unable to forget that last day in the courtroom. Robert's threat of vengeance. And your conversation later with the sheriff. You'll be wanting me now, Sheriff. Wanting you, John? Well, I'm a criminal. As much as Robert, I shielded him, knowing his guilt. Well, I... I kind of think it's Robert you'd better be concerned about. Every man has a cross. Well, Robert's mine. Yes, I, I know how you feel. Uh, it seems like just yesterday I used to visit your old place when we were kids. <laughs> a lot of fun together as boys. Uh, we'd best forget it. But, John, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is... Yes, Sheriff? I don't like the way Robert looked at you when you testified against him. There was hate in his eyes, John. Downright hate. Oh, he'll have plenty of time to think things over. And realize that what I did was right and honorable. Well, I hope so. But Robert was never one to forget a grudge. You're no match for him, John. Well, I'll be going now. Well, uh, is there anything I can do? No. I just want to be left alone from now on. <laughs> There had been charges brought against you, but quickly dropped. And through the past three years, you had withdrawn more and more, living with your guilt, not once visiting Robert at the penitentiary, only a few hours away. Time and again, you told yourself that you were perfectly safe, hadn't you, John? Until word came only an hour ago that Robert had escaped in a prison break this morning. Yes, Robert is free to make good his threat. Now there's nothing to do but wait in your dark house. Listen to the rising storm and the bump of the oak limb on the roof. You start at the jangle of the phone that echoes through the high rooms. You tell yourself not to answer, 
It could be Robert making sure you're home. You breathe with relief when it stops. Again, you check each door and window. Then you sit in a chair facing the door, trying to stem the flood of memories and voices that return like a nightmare. Why don't you tell him, John? Why don't you tell him the truth? There was hate in his eyes, John. Downright hate. You're no match for him. I'll come back, John. And when I do, you can count on one thing. There'll be another trial for murder. Yes, John. You're sure these past three years have only added to his hatred. Robert's determination to come back regardless of the consequences. To kill or be killed. And now that he's escaped in a prison break, you decide to wait for him. Kill him as you kill Jed Peters, all in uh, self-defense. End your fear and worry once and for all. But as time goes on, you begin to wonder, don't you, John? You wonder if Robert might not be nearby. Yeah. You go to the window. Throw it open. Close the shutters. Slam and lock the window. Then you go back to your chair. Resume the endless waiting. You wonder whether your fears were groundless. You feel a surge of hope that Robert may have decided to postpone his vengeance. Go far away to start a new life somewhere else. Again, the phone. This time, it doesn't stop. Uh, hello? Hello. Uh, who is it? That's you, John. Can't hear you very well. Speak up. Oh, uh, who's calling? It's Charlie uh, Briscoe up the road. Not surprised you don't recognize me. Been a long time since I've seen Oh, you. yes, Charlie, of course. How are you? Oh, tolerable. Quite a storm we're having, isn't it? Well, they, they come and go. Oh. What do you want? Nothing special, just a neighborly call. Sort of wondered how you were making out. I'm making out, Charlie. I was just saying to Sarah last week, we ought to have you over. It's not good for a man to be alone all the time like you are. Uh, I guess you are alone. Well, of course I'm alone. Any reason for you to think different? Well, no, not exactly. Of course, I guess you heard about the prison break, Robert's escape. Oh, everybody's heard. There's nothing I can do about it. Nobody's blaming you. Guess the last place an escaped convict would go to is in his own house. Well, Robert's just a stepbrother. I'm not one to harbor a criminal. Of course you're not, John. Besides, it might be just a rumor. Robert's been heading this way, though. Well, who saw him? I don't know. You know how talk gets around. It could be a mistake. Is that why you call, Charlie? No, John. I never was one to surprise. Of course, there's the money that was never found. He'll likely head for that wherever it is. Not back to your place. Um, goodbye, Charlie. Well, John, the rumor that Robert has been seen doesn't surprise you, does it? You're certain he's on his way to see you, to try and kill you. But you'll be more than ready for him, won't you, John? You outwitted him three years ago. You're sure you can do it again. Rifle in hand, you sit facing the big front door. Waiting. Waiting. The grandfather clock in the hallway strikes off another hour. And still you wait. And then... A voice, John. Or was it? You wonder if it was just the wind. You strain to hear. There's nothing more. And then... You start as you hear the shutters rattling in the wind. You remember there's a back door, too, and you decide to cover that entrance. Set a trap for Robert. You walk to the kitchen. Take your other rifle from its place on the wall. Anchor it securely to a chair so that it points directly toward the back door. You tie a string to the doorknob, the other end to the rifle trigger. Loop the string over the back of the chair so that when Robert opens the back door, the rifle will be discharged. You leave the kitchen and return to the front of the house, where once again you sit, rifle in hand, watching that front door. But as the minutes drag by, a feeling of fear begins to overcome you. You wish you hadn't hung up on Charlie Briscoe when you did, that you'd suggest that he drive over, help out in case Robert arrives and attempts to carry out his threat to kill you 
decide to phone him again. Number, please. Hello, operator, I want you to get me Charlie Briscoe, 136, quick as you can. 136. I'll ring him. Oh, operator, hurry, will you? I'm ringing. Well, keep it up. I've got to get to him. Must not be home. There's no answer. Oh, I'm sure he's home. I just talked to him. Ring him again. Keep on. Mr. Briscoe doesn't hear so well, you know. This is Mr. Aaron, isn't it? Yes, John Aaron. Maybe you're ringing the wrong number. No. This is right. Is there something wrong, Mr. Aaron? Get him, Arthur. Just get him. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, uh Hello. phone's dead. You're certain this is Robert's way to cut the lines and make his return safe and sure. Oh, what's that? You try to call out, but your voice strangles in your throat. The sound of the branches of the oak tree just outside the house brings another memory, doesn't it, John? How as boys, you and Robert had often scaled the tree, climbed across the roof to an unsealed hatch leading into the attic. You rush up the winding stairs. Open the door to the now empty attic. You're just in time, aren't you? You hear the sound of someone moving on the roof. The steps come closer. The hatch is drawn back. A head appears. Then the shoulders. You aim quickly. Too bad, Robert. You should have known if I killed once, I can kill again. You rush back downstairs, open the front door, and hurry to the figure huddled on the ground. Determined to end the threat of Robert for all time. Uh, oh. Oh. I'm sorry, Robert. Sorry it has to be this way. No. No, John. I'm not Robert. Would you... Sheriff, it's you. Yes. Yes, I, I didn't see any light. But I... I thought something was wrong. I remembered about the roof when we were kids. I, I didn't know, Sheriff. I swear I didn't. I thought you were Robert. Come back to kill me, and now I... No, no, no. It's... All right, Sheriff. Your, your aim wasn't too good. Oh. Just my shoulder. Oh, my God. Hold it here. I'll help you here. Right. I'll get you to your car. I'll find help. No. Easy oh. now. Uh, the phone's gone out here, but I'll get you over to Charlie Briscoe's place. Right. We'll phone Doc Wilson from there. He, he'll take care of you. Yes, thanks, John. Uh, I shouldn't have fired so quick, but Robert isn't one to wave. It, it was him or me, I Sheriff. I know, John. I know. Don't worry about it. I've got a hunch they'll get Robert before he gets here. <laughs> Price. That's usually one of the first questions a motorist asks when shopping for an automobile battery. But really, the only accurate way to compare battery costs is to ask, what does it cost per month? In other words, the price of the battery divided by the number of months for which the battery is guaranteed. Compared in that way, one of today's lowest cost batteries is the new Signal Deluxe battery, which is guaranteed a full 30 months on a service basis. And the cost comes down even lower when you consider the generous trade-in allowance signal dealers are now giving for old batteries and the liberal credit terms which are available. Most important, however, is the fact that these 30-month guaranteed signal deluxe batteries naturally have to be built better in order to last so long. In fact, new signal deluxe batteries are built to deliver up to 35% more power for quicker starting and more dependable performance, all during their long, long life. So you see, when you're enjoying lowest cost, you're also enjoying a full two and one half years of today's finest, most trouble-free battery service with a Signal Deluxe Battery, the battery you get at Signal service stations. It's going all right, isn't it, John? 
You put the sheriff in your car, rush him to Charlie Briscoe's farm, where Briscoe tells you he's just heard on the radio that Robert, hiding in a wooded section of hills near your farm, is completely surrounded. His capture a matter of minutes. You breathe a sigh of relief. Wait only long enough to make sure the doctor is on his way to take care of the sheriff. And then quickly excuse yourself. You decide the best thing for you to do is take what's left of the money you took when you killed Jed Peters three years ago. Leave town. Go to some distant place where Robert can never find you. You drive home quickly, but this time you play it safe. Just in case Robert wasn't captured. You park down the road. Run through the darkness toward the house. John? Robert! No! Yes. Yes, but the radio is... I gave him the slip, John. I had to see you. you. I stumbled, I twisted my ankle. Don't kill me, Robert, while I'm helpless this way. I'm not going to kill you at all. Well, you swore you would. I know, but I've changed my mind. I've had time to think. All I want is for you to tell them the truth. That you committed the crime I've spent three years in prison no, for. No, 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 no. No one will ever know that I killed Jed and took the money. But you listen to me, Robert. The money's hidden under the stairs. You can have it all. Go someplace where they'll never find you. No, John. But I'll get you into the house. We'll talk a little more. Yeah, but I, I don't think I can walk. I think I can still carry you here. Come on. No, here. no, 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 Robert. No, no, no. No! Not that door! Don't worry, John. Don't worry. All I'm going to do is take... All right, boys. Come on. Stay where you are, Robert. I'm not going anywhere. But I'm afraid my stepbrother is dead. Hold the light on him. Who fired the gun? Well, I guess I did, by accident. I opened the door, and it seems my stepbrother had the rifle set to kill me. But I was carrying him, and the shot got him instead. That's what happened, all right. You can see the string tied to the rifle. Don't touch it. We figured you'd come here, Robert. That's why we came here. Glad we did. We found out a lot. You heard what John said? Everything. His whole confession. Everybody had you wrong, Robert. I guess this time your brother's trap got the right man. will be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Howard McNair, Truda Marston, Bill Boucher, Pat McGeehan, Herbert Litton, and Britt Wood. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Gomer Cool, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler was entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.